in this particular lecture we will focus on data management so what is data management overall not just in the context of iot and industry 4.0 so what is data man management overall is first what we are going to understand and thereafter data management with hadoop is what we are going to understand so basically this is this particular module as you have noticed focuses on analytics right analytics with the help of different different technologies and so on so uh, we are focusing on cloud computing different different uh, you know analytic techniques including machine learning etc also we have understood machine learning ai etc we have understood so how do you manage this data before even you can do all these analytics right so how do you manage this data so data management overall is what we are going to understand and data management in the context of iiot is what we are going to understand next and thereafter we are going to switch our gears and we will understand what is data management in the context of use of hadoop uh, that is what we are going to focus on thereafter so data management basically when we are talking about as the name suggests as the term suggests focuses on different attributes such as storing the data archiving the data then once the data has been used and is no longer required disposing of the data securing the data keeping the data in a safe manner secured manner at the end of the project completion requirements etc these are some of these different requirements of data management this basically also includes development of policies procedures to do all these above things that i mentioned just now either you are storing the data in a electronic or non electronic manner and so on so these are all these different aspects of data management and as i told you at the outset that this is something that what is data management in general and not necessarily in the context of iiot or data management with hadoop those are the things that we are going to discuss next but this is the overall purview of data management so the the different attributes of data management and so on so in recent years as we have seen before we had a lecture which was completely dedicated to big data so we have understood what big data is but what we have understood is also that big data at present is an important technology because big data is what most of the data that we are dealing with at present particularly in the industrial context particularly in the iiot and iot contexts the nature of data that we deal with are typically unstructured and having the characteristics of the big data so if you recall that in the context of big data in the lecture on big data we earlier discussed about the different characteristics of big data we talked about the definitions of big data starting from 3 v's through 5 v's through 7 v's and so on data having high volume coming in high velocity having high variety variability veracity and so on and so forth so many different attributes all these different v's were used to characterize the big data and big data is unstructured typically unstructured data so how do you deal with all these unstructured data is what big data concerns so managing this kind of data managing this kind of data and managing this kind of data in this particular lecture we are going to focus on to get an overview of use of hadoop to manage this kind of data right of course you know you need to have this cloud enablement and cloud enablement is what we have already discussed earlier and we have we are also going to talk about data centers data center networks and so on in another lecture so putting everything together is how you are going to manage the data and thereafter use the data for analysis processing analytics and uh, deriving intelligence or meaning out of this data so typically industrial machinery having fitted with large number of different sensors actuators and so on all these different iot devices in most of this iiot settings you are going to have these industrial machinery with these different sensors actuators and so on basically generating large volumes of data having all these big data characteristics so this kind of data will have to be dealt with adequately so cloud will help you with the help of its different models such as the infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service that we have understood in the cloud computing lecture earlier 
cloud with the help of all of these different cloud models and architectures will help you to offer on demand self service, on demand you know service of computation, computational services on demand will be made available to the end users, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, measured service, cloud is a measured service. So, depending on the units of usage of these computational resources, one will first of all one will be able to measure the units of use and then accordingly one is going to be built. So, billing is going to happen depending on the units of measured service that are going to be used. So, these are some of these different characteristics of cloud computing which makes it makes it popular in the context of data management. So, cloud models all these cloud models ES, PaaS, SaaS along with its different characteristics that we just spoke about and we discussed at in uh, depth in uh, the cloud computing lecture. So, together we are going to use it for the data management. So, just as a recap in the context of IoT, big data basically describes use of or management of this kind of data that are coming from the day to day physical objects being used for serving day to day activities and so on which are interconnected together typically through the internet and these devices the IoT devices, the sensors etcetera which are have their own different identity and which generate lot of these different types of data. These sensors fitted to these different machinery industrial machinery dev devices etcetera which are working in the field and so on and each of all of these basically connected to the to the internet work or the internet generating a lot of data. How do you handle this data? IOT data, IIOT data, how do you handle it is what we are talking about in the context of IIOT data management. So, data center we are going to talk about in depth in another lecture, but handling this kind of big data at the data centers is very important. IIOT data, IOT data having different characteristics that we spoke about just now will have to be handled properly. Handling with respect to the story, storage of the data, management of the data, organization of the data, estimating and providing necessary processing capacity, this will also be have to be done. So, data centers are useful in doing all of these things that you see listed in front of you. Storage, management, organization of the data, estimating and providing necessary processing cap capacity, providing sufficient network infrastructure, effectively managing energy consumption, replicating the data to keep the backup, developing business oriented strategic solutions from this kind of data, the big data, helping with uh, the business personnel to analyze the existing data and discovering problems in the business operations. These are some of these data handling aspects uh, that are very important in the context of IIoT and data centers which we are going to talk about in another lecture is going to help a lot in catering to these data handling and data management requirements that are there in the context of IIoT. So, this is the overall process of data management, it starts with the generation of the data, then uh, acquisition of the data that means, getting the data, storing the data and thereafter analyzing the data. So, for each of these four steps in the data management process, the corresponding attributes, the corresponding characteristics are mentioned. The only thing that I would like to highlight are two things, number one is storage, storage is very crucial over here. For storage you are going to use the cloud, but not just the cloud itself, but we are going to use this Hadoop and uh, enabled with MapReduce etcetera, which are also going to help in performing no SQL queries and so on. So, no SQL is basically querying the databases you know this is a query language which can help you in querying databases which store unstructured data. So, if you have structured data stored in relational tables traditionally, so there, there you can use your SQL, uh, SQL language for querying those tables, but if you do not have the data in the form that can be stored in the form of tables then this no SQL will help. So, no SQL is useful for big data 
is useful for unstructured big data and so on. And NoSQL works very well with Hadoop, MapReduce, etc. So, this is basically your storage and queries and so on. And the other thing that I would like to hi highlight in this particular um, uh, slide is uh, basically the analysis. For analysis, you have large number of all these computational techniques that are there, including use of Bloom filters, parallel computing techniques, hashing, indexing, machine learning, clustering, uh, then classification, uh, use of neural networks, SVM, all of these can help in different ways for this analysis. So, it starts with generation of the data, acquisition of the data, thereafter storage of the data and finally, the analysis of the data. So, data can be generated from different sources, can be enterprise data which talks about you know trades, you know trading data, data coming from different machinery, from different systems, different parts of the systems, sales data, financial data, productivity data, inventory data, all kinds of enterprise data, IoT data that means all these machinery in these different industry, manufacturing industry, transportation, agriculture, etcetera. The, the sensors and the IoT devices that are fitted, they continuously basically generate lot of data. So, that is that IoT data that we are talking about in the context of industries. So, uh, then biomedical data generated from the medical clinics, medical R and Ds, you know through different biotechnological, uh, uh, you know uh, different biotechnological methods such as gene sequencing, etcetera. So, all of these are data sources for this big data. Other fields also generate lot of data, nuclear power plants, astronomical devices such as big, big telescopes which look into the sky continuously 24 7. So, those computational biological fields also generate lot of these kind of data which are unstructured and having these big data characteristics and so on. These are the data that will have to be managed. Acquisition of the data in terms of collection, uh, you know logging the data and recording the data automatically generated from these data sources and how do you basically collect and log this data that is important. Sensory data such as sound wave, voice, vibration, automobile, chemical, current, weather, pressure, temperature, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. These are all these different types of sensory data which will have to be acquired and complex and variety of data collection can is possible through the use of different mobile devices such as geographical locations, 2D barcoding, pictures, videos, etcetera. Data transmission through the network, through the system and we will see in another lecture how the data can be sent through the network through different interconnected data centers which will have inter, inter data center traffic, data center traffic, data traffic and also intra data, cent, data center data traffic. So, transmission of the data within and outside the data center networks is what is very important. Pre-processing of the data, collecting the data, removing the noise, redundancy that might be existing, inconsistencies that might be found out. So, these are some of these pre-processing tasks that are relevant. It is also very important to pre-process the data for serving these different needs, integration, cleaning and redundancy mitigation. Integration talks about combination of data from arriving from different sources and providing users with a unified integrated view of the data even though the data is originated and is coming from different different channels. Cleaning of the data to remove all these incompleteness, in, inaccuracies, incorrect, uh, incorrectness that might be there. If there is any unreasonable data that might be there, modifying that particular data or deleting this, that data and also mitigating the redundancies such as eliminating data repetition through detection, filtering, compression of data to avoid unnecessary transmission of data through these limited resource, limited or resource constrained networks is what is done as part of data pre-processing. Storing the data in different databases, traditional or non-traditional databases such as the NoSQL databases that I mentioned earlier is very important. NoSQL databases um, will support different things such as key value database, column 
oriented database and document oriented database and their corresponding techniques about how to handle the data in each of these different databases is what is of concern in the context of uh, data, data, data management. Data storage in the files, GFS Google file system is a notable example of distributed file system storing large scale file system data, data stored in different file systems. HDFS is an another example, Hadoop distributed file system. Then Cosmos FS is another example, these are different examples of uh, the file systems used for data storage. So, industrial data is what concerns IIoT, industrial data managing such kind of data using all these different techniques that I just mentioned will have to be done. Incorporating uh, uh, industrial data uh, management basically will incorporate data that is generated from different processing plants, manufacturing plants and so on and the management is done in the entire value chain. So, you know basically what it means is that the data industrial data will have to be handled properly in order to deliver value to the end users properly. And uh, this value chain is very value chain consideration is very important. Availability of the data has to be ensured in industrial uh, data, uh, data scenarios. So, availability of the data in order to derive intelligence later on because if the data that is continuously coming etcetera, etcetera is not handled adequately then it is meaningless basically it is meaningless to uh, derive any intelligence. If the data is not available properly then you cannot do any further intelligence on it. So, this basically will have to uh, will also help the higher availability of the data uh, will also help in enabling proper decision making whenever uh, it is required. The advantages of industrial data management are that uh, production data of a particular manufacturing plant is made available through uh, such kind of activities such as raw material consumption, production specifications, energy consumption, plant utilization, diagnostic information and so on and so forth. And then for industrial data management you need to have an automated process implemented which will do all these data management activities autonomously. So, let us now take a specific example of how Hadoop a very popular technology could be used for data management in IIoT scenarios. So, what is Hadoop? Hadoop is basically a very popular technology from Apache which gives a software framework for distributed processing of large data sets. If you have large data sets distributed processing of those data sets in a cluster of computers is what Hadoop basically specifically gives you the framework for. So, open source implementation for uh, GFS and MapReduce and MapReduce and HDFS components these are all these different aspects of Hadoop. So, there are different building blocks of Hadoop. So, number one is Hadoop common which is basically a common component which is basically a module that contains the utilities that would support the other Hadoop components like the ones that I am going to mention next. So, it is basically a common is basically a module that will help other modules to work together in a connected fashion. The HDFS is the central thing in Hadoop, HDFS Hadoop distributed file system is the core of Hadoop. It provides reliable data storage and access across different nodes uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the system. The rapid data transfer among the nodes is going to be possible with the help of Hadoop uh, uh, distributed file system HDFS and fault tolerant uh, fault tolerance is an attribute that is inherent to this HDFS architecture. This HDFS architecture as I will show you later on, uh, HDFS architecture basically uh, has different layers and in one of these layers basically what you have are something known as the blocks which actually contain the data. So, what happens in HDFS is these blocks are replicate, replicated. So, basically the different data nodes which I will tell you later on these data nodes basically have different blocks and each of these blocks is replicated across multiple data nodes. So, this basically ensures fault tolerance if something goes wrong with one of these different blocks the other blocks the replicas of these different blocks are there in the other data nodes. 
So, the, build, uh, the other building blocks of uh, Hadoop include the MapReduce which is like uh, a framework uh, for processing large number of large amount of databases in parallel. This is a MapReduce, MapReduce is also code to Hadoop, uh, um, but uh, MapReduce the, the algorithms that are there large number of different types of algorithms are there, it is just a philosophy, it is a framework that Hadoop basically also uses. So, uh, YARN is basically the next generation MapReduce which assigns CPU, memory, storage to different applications run, running on the Hadoop cluster of different computers. So, this is how this HDFS which is central to Hadoop looks like. So, in HDFS you have two types of nodes, one is the name node, the other one is the data node. The name node is a centralized node, so this particular job, job tracker for example, is a name node right. So, it is it is being run in the name node. So, this is a centralized node and then you have these different other task trackers for example, which are basically being executed in the data nodes. So, this name node basically the centralized node maintains all this metadata about the different files, the different metadata are uh, basically maintained uh, about these different files in the name node, the centralized node, whereas the distributed node, these task tracker, the, the, the data nodes etcetera store the actual data and these files are divided in these into different blocks and each of these different blocks is replicated and this is what I was telling you earlier. These different blocks have their own uh, the data, the data are replicated across these different data nodes and so on in uh, this HDFS architecture. So, the name node basically is something which is the centralized entity which stores the metadata about the file system. It maintains two in memory tables to map the data nodes to the blocks and the vice versa. So, name nodes are connected to the data nodes which are actually the ones where the storage of the actual data is done. So, these data nodes also are interconnected with each other they can rebalance, they can replicate the data across uh, each other in this data node layer and they update the name node with the block information periodically. So, that the name node has the proper uh, you know metadata the updated metadata in place. So, before updating the data nodes would verify the checksums uh, for ensuring the integrity of this data. So, there are these concepts of the job tracker and the task tracker the job trackers are basically running at the name nodes and the task trackers are running in the task uh, in the data node right. So, uh, these name nodes the job tracker will receive the user's job will decide on how many tasks will run uh, using uh, uh, the, num the concept of mapping and how many jobs and which jobs are going to run that mapping is going to be done and uh, is going to also decide on where to run each of these different jobs. And the task tracker on the other hand will run at each of these data nodes. So, this is one data node, this is another data node. So, task trackers are running on them receiving the data receiving the tasks basically from the job tracker. So, the tasks these tasks that are going to be executed over here in these data nodes are going to be uh, retrieved uh, are going to be received from the job tracker and uh, uh, these uh, are going to always be in communication with the job tracker the task tracker is going to be in communication with the job tracker and these are always going to also report the progress to the job tracker. So, basically it is a master slave architecture where basically the master executes the operations like uh, opening, closing, renaming the files and dictionaries and determines the mapping of the blocks to the data nodes. Slaves are the ones which read write requests from the file systems clients and perform block creation, deletion, replication and so on. So, this is basically this uh, this becomes your master node, the name node becomes a master node, these are like the slave nodes and the slave nodes are basically uh, continuously uh, being up, uh, they basically give get the different tasks from the job tracker which will have to be executed at each of these different data nodes. And basically this task, task tracker after completion of the task or in between also they would be updating the status to the job tracker. So, this is basically the master and this becomes your different slaves. So, another thing that I would like to highlight over here is something known as the MongoDB. So, MongoDB is a data management tool uh, which basically supports uh, databases different databases and particularly in this context of IIoT we are talking about 
no SQL databases because of the unstructured data that we are typically experiencing. So, uh, no SQL database is supported uh, by MongoDB. It ensures uh, MongoDB is database, basically it is a database, it is a no SQL database and it works in conjunction with Hadoop. So, this particular database will ensure performance improvement, performance ensuring the performance overall good performance is ensured, scalability, availability and so on and creating a similar view of data across the enterprise. So, MongoDB basically works hand in hand with uh, MongoDB works hand in hand with Hadoop. So, Hadoop basically adds a powerful framework to MongoDB for complex analytics um, and uh, different uh, applications are supported by MongoDB such as batch aggregation, data warehousing and uh, ETL data uh, that means extract, transform uh, and loading of data. This is basically a common term ETL in the context of databases. So, ETL data handling. So, batch aggregation, data warehousing and ETL data handling these are the different uh, characteristics of uh, or, or the different uh, functionalities of the MongoDB along with Hadoop. So, with this we come to an end of uh, this particular lecture. We have uh, these different references given to you for you to benefit from and uh, if you are interested you know there is a lot to do with data management and if you are interested particularly Hadoop is very popular, MongoDB is very popular, MapReduce is also very popular. These are the ones which work hand in hand and this can help you in proper data management uh, of big data that is being that is experienced typically in the context of in the context of um, uh, in the context of IIoT. So, with this we come to an end and this is the assortment of different references that is listed over here. Thank you.